So what happened to Redux? It was once the single most popular library in the React ecosystem, and now it's losing popularity. Is there merit in this? Let's talk about that. To understand what's happening, let's take a look back in history. Redux was created with many other libraries when Facebook proposed the Flux pattern. And the whole idea, the whole objective of the Flux pattern wasn't as much to manage complex state, it was to be able to track state changing over time and debug state. This may sound silly now, but back in the day when we were still, when we were still learning how to create complex JavaScript applications for the browser, it wasn't unheard of to lose track of the state in your application. Facebook had a common example. They have the messenger feature back in the bottom of the page, and it had a badge with the, num the number of unread messages. Back in the top, they also showed the number of unread messages, same piece of state, but somehow they would get out of sync. It would show three unread messages down there, one unread message is up and some engineer would go to fix it and the bug would reappear again and again and again. This is the kind of situation where Flux excels. It is able to track state changing, it has tooling like the developer tools, time travel debugging, uh, and because it was the best among these libraries, it started to get some popularity. But in my opinion, that's not what got the wide popularity uh, that Redux got. In my opinion, that's because React didn't have a context API back then. Well, it did, but the context API back then was kind of closed. It was undocumented and it was supposed to be used only by library authors, not directly by React developers. As a consequence, uh, when you had a complex hierarchy of components or a big hierarchy of components and you were passing props down level by level, uh, people would use Redux to be able to pass to have a single state tree and pass uh, and have some component deeply nested down acts as a piece of that state. Of course, Redux wasn't created for that. So people start pushing back and saying that Redux is overly complex. And to that I say, well, yes, if you take a dump truck to grocery shopping, it, it, can, it can be done, but it's going to be inconvenient. Uh, so in a, in a way, Redux started to get super overused. Fast forward a few, uh, a few time, and React introduces the context API, a new context API, now documented and open for everybody. So if you're using Redux only as a way to pass data around in your deeply nested uh, state, uh, in, in your deeply nested tree of components, then the context API is a good alternative for that, and it's built in in React. Fast forward just some more time, and React introduces the hooks API with use state and use reducer and combine that with use context and you now have a whole built-in solution to create state and pass it around uh, in your application. So for some use cases, React now provides a pretty decent solution out of the box. That's why Redux is losing popularity. Now, notice that it doesn't, uh, React doesn't provide a complete alternative to Redux. Uh, Redux still has a lot of advantage in the, area, in the area of state management and tracking the state changing and tooling around that. So this brings the question, if you, for example, work on a project that already has Redux, because Redux was so popular that there are now hundreds of thousands of projects out there using React and Redux. So if you're use, working on a project that has React and Redux, what should you do? Should you get rid of Redux? Well, I don't know your code base, but probably not. You're already benefiting from these state tracking possibilities and tooling that Redux provides. And Redux already has also has a different, uh, some other different advantages. For example, the context API, it can be slow at times. Uh, it's well documented in the React documentation and Redux already uses all of the tricks to keep performance even though it uses context under the hood. So if you want to refresh your Redux implementation, I would, I, I would give you three hints. First, at some point in time, it, it, it was, there was this idea that if you're using Redux, you shouldn't use local state, which is of course a terrible idea. So if your project is structured like that, I would suggest that you start using local state where it makes sense. It's already going to give you a lot of breathing room. Uh, second tip, if your project uses the connect function with map state to props and map dispatch to props, take a look at newer versions of Redux. It contains a super cool hook API. 
finally, take a look at Redux Toolkit. Uh, it's a library created by the same maintainers of Redux and it provides uh, an opinionated set of utilities that allows you to create your action creators, your reducers, uh, much quicker and with less code. It's super neat. What if you're creating a new project now? Should you consider using Redux? Well, here's the thing. Redux is still a valid solution, but now there are many others. So what I would say to you is, if, if, if the project is very small, of course, just use what, Redux, what React provides out of the box and go from there. But other than that, what I suggest you do is take some time to see your options, understand the requirements of the projects and decide what you want to do. Because there's uh, Redux, there are newer state management libraries such as Zustand. Uh, there is of course Context, but Context has specific ways that you have to use to keep it performance. So get informed, read about it and take a conscious decision. So there you have it, a React cast with no code, just talking. If you like this format, please comment below. And if you like these videos, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. See you on the next one.